Greetings from the Lung Isolation Techniques Workshop. So, before we start this session, uh, we need to answer a question. Is lung isolation always mandatory? You will agree with me that a common method to do thoracotomy in infants and small children is by surgeon doing manual retraction with either lung retractor or use of multiple sutures like what you can see in this picture where we are doing a uh, left-sided thoracotomy. Okay, and what we normally do is uh, the anesthetist ventilate with both lungs with a slightly lower tidal volume with a slightly higher respiratory weight. Uh, those of you who have done a case like this will agree with me that uh, hypoxia often results in these kind of cases, which will force us to use a slightly larger tight volume. So you can see the lung tissues here, which are collapsed. So when you try to uh, recruit these lung, uh, obviously the surgeon or his assistant will not like it, especially if you're doing something crucial on the arch vessel or something. So what they do is they tend to use more force to keep this lung down. So a good amount of communication is really needed when you do such cases. Otherwise, what will happen uh, is um, they will use more force which will can damage this underlying lung or uh, the force can kink the heart uh, or the great vessels and produce hemodynamic instability. So um, you may wonder whether to uh, use uh, this technique of low tidal volume uh, increased respiratory rate or endobronchial intubation to the right side. But studies have clearly said that this low tidal volume ventilation is better as it produces less incidence of desaturation. But obviously, uh, this you can probably manage a, a, a quietation or uh, you can manage a, a PDA ligation, which is short procedure. But if the surgeon is planning something like a VATS, you may want to do a proper lung isolation. So what I wanted to conclude from this slide was it is not always mandatory, but it's, it's desirable to know uh, a lung isolation techniques and practice, more importantly, practice it so that when you are in need, you can do it comfortably. So, uh, we'll uh, start uh, from chronological order. So probably how we had developed these techniques. So the selective endobronchial intubation was one technique which was used when you don't have the equipment or expertise. Obviously, this is the simplest technique and this is a technique of choice in an emergency situation. If you remember uh, the adult anatomy, the up, right upper uh, main bronchus takeoff is at 25 degrees and left side is at 45. This you can see in an older child, but in a smaller child or an infant, you can have it at 55 degree angle with each other. So this can be achieved blindly or with the help of a fiber optic bronchoscope. But if you are going to do it blindly, need to uh, hear loss of lung sounds on the contralateral side. Okay. But if the facilities are available, it's always better to guide it with the help of a fiber optic bronchoscope, especially uh, on the right side. I'll tell you why. And when you are using a cuff tube, you need to make sure that the cuff of the tube is lying within the bronchus. So how do you select the size of the tube? So age is a better predictor of the bronchial diameter. You don't have to remember this formula, but have a guide uh, in your reference section so that you can select the tube or with experience, you will tend to remember. Okay, so um, uh, when you uh, say move the tube to one side, what we need to do is you can rotate the bevel. So this is how you normally intubate. So if you rotate the bevel, you can go to uh, the right side or if you take it to the left, uh, turn it to the opposite di uh, direction, you can turn to the left side. So this is something that you can do to improve the access. Other thing which is a uh, common technique which is followed by all of us, that means turning the head to the opposite side. Uh, so, um, other thing what you can aid, use to aid your uh, you know, endobronchial intubations is a angulated bougie. So, this is a normal pediatric bougie. You can angulate the tip and this uh, is a much better mechanism to direct uh, your tube to either right side or left side. But as I said earlier, it can be a bit more tricky, especially when you're trying to isolate the right side. When you're going to isolate the right side, you need to align the Murphy size with the right upper lobe. So this you can achieve reliably only if you have a fiber optic bronchoscope. That means a pediatric fiber optic bronchoscope. The last thing I said in terms of a pediatric lung isolation is to have a cuffed or uncuffed uh, endotracheal tube. Uh, that means uh, if ideally, uh, uh, if you're using a cuffed endotracheal tube, 
this has to be within the bronchus. So here what we need to understand is the distance from the tip to the proximal end of the balloon is about two and a half centimeter. So in a smaller child, this is very difficult. So when you see the videos in the later part of the presentation, you will understand that uh, in a small child, it is impossible to have the entire length within the bronchus. So if this cuff herniates into the trachea, it can produce airway obstruction. So there are certain pros of uh, selective endobronchial intubation, but you can see that it is not without problems. Okay, so uh, when you see in this slide, you can actually stop it and understand this slide later. Mm -hmm.